Hello everyone, happy to see you here, welcome back to my channel Hi Mathematics and today we have really interesting and in the same way this is a very tricky challenge, we have a cubic equation x cubed equal to x minus 1 to the third power. And a lot of students might be saying, hey mister, this is the easiest challenge I've ever seen, we can easily mm, take the cube's root on both sides, so we can solve this looks like that, so we have cube's root on the left side, so we have x cubed equal to the same cube's root we apply on the right side, so we have as a result right here the, this expression and we cancel this cube and these three, this cube and these three right here and as a result we have what? We have x equal to x minus 1, something like that. From here what do we have? We have that our 0 equal to minus 1 and a lot of students say, okay mister, this is very bad solution, how can we solve this challenge correctly? Because because a lot of students solve this challenge like that, they don't know about they don't know about a correct approach, how can we do this correctly and step by step? So in this moment, at this moment, forget about this solution. So this is the most common mistake. A lot of students solve this challenge like that, a lot of students apply this cube's root on both sides and they don't care about a correct solution to this challenge. So in this video I'm going to fully explain you how can I solve this correctly and step by step. First of all, let's separate this part right here and let's look for example at this x cube. Let's write it x, x cube right here. And on the right side, what do we have right here? We have x minus 1 to the third power. We everyone know about this formula. We can we can write this. This is equal to uh, x cube right here. So x cube minus 3x square plus 3x and minus 1. This is our binomial formula right here, so we, we raise this to the third power. Right now, if we look closely, we have x cube right here on the left side and x cube right here on the right side. So it implies that we can cancel by this x cube. Brilliant. Right now, what do we have? We still have this expression, so let's rewrite this expression. We have minus 3x square. I just changed sides a little bit, it changed nothing for us. I write this expression on the left side, so we have minus 3x square plus 3x and minus 1 equal to equal to zero. Right now let's change sign. So let's multiply both side by minus one. When we multiply both side by minus one, what do we get right here? We have right here three x square. Okay, so three x square minus three x minus three x and plus one. But in the same way this is a quadratic equation, yeah, we have right here x square, we have x, we have a constant, so right now let's solve this quadratic equation, let's do this right now. So from this equation we know that a equal to a equal to 3, b equal to minus 3 if you're talking about coefficient right here, and c equal to 1. Yeah, obviously this is our coefficient. First of all, let's find discriminant of this quadratic equation, this is our first step, so our discriminant equal to b square minus 4ac, b square minus 4ac, and this is equal to b square, we have minus 3 square, yeah, minus 4 times a equal to 3 and times 1, and we right here, what do we have, 9 minus, right here we have 12, and as a result, this is equal to minus 3. And right now, a lot of students understand what I meant before, because right here we have complex root, yeah, because our discriminant our uh, square root of discriminant right here is equal to square root of minus 3. And it implied that this expression is not less than 0. It, this is imaginary imaginary expression. So right here we have 2 complex, 2 complex root. And right now a lot of students understand, okay, that we have right here, we have complex root. But let's find this root. We need to find this root right here. So we have x first, x first equal to, or x second to both roots, let's find both roots, equal to, uh, we have uh, we have what, minus b, yeah, minus b plus minus, square root of discriminant, and all over to a. Let's plug in each of these elements into these spots right here, so minus b equal to 3, plus minus, square root of discriminant, so square root of minus 3, and all over to a equal to 6, so right here we have 6. Right now, let's find our imaginary unit right here. So let's write the square root of minus 3 as uh, like that. So we have 3 plus minus square root of minus 1 times 3. Okay, something like that. And right now, according to the um, square root property or just the square root rules, we can split this by two square roots. So we have right here 3 plus minus square root of minus 1 times square root of 3 and all over all over 6. Right now, this is our imaginary part, this is equal to i, so as a result we have, we have our roots right here, let's look closely what do we have right here, we have 3 plus minus 
i square root of 3 and all over all over 6. Right now let's divide both sides by, so let's divide our left side and right side by 6. We can divide it by parts. So as a result we have 3 over 6 plus minus i square root of 3 over 6. Okay, something like that. Right now let's cancel this numerator and denominator by 6. And as a result we have what? We have 1 half plus minus i square root of 3 over 6. This is our solution, but we can easily simplify this expression right here. So we can multiply our, our numerator and denominator by square root of 3. So let's do this right here. So by square root of 3 we multiply right here, and we multiply right here. So as a result, this is equal to 3, and this 3 is cancelled with this 6. So as a result we divide this numerator and denominator by 3, and as a result this is our final answer. This is 1 half plus minus, right here what do we have? We have i in our numerator, yeah, so we have i, and we divide all of these by 2 square root of 3, 2 square root of 3. And this is our answer, and a lot of students right now understand what I meant before, because right here we have two complex roots. We don't have real number roots, we have complex roots. So let's write our answer to this challenge, and after writing my answer, I'm going to show you a plot to this challenge, so we will understand what is uh, like uh, what is the correct approach according to a graph method right here. So right now, let's write our final answer right here. So our answer, our answer, x first, we don't have x first in terms of real number root, okay? Uh, sometimes x first is our real number root and x second and third is a complex root, but in our case we don't have real number roots, we have only complex root. So two complex, two complex roots, two complex roots, and x first, x first equal to one half plus minus, or let, let's go with plus, plus i over two square root of three, this is our first root, first complex root, and the second root, x second equal to one half minus i over two square root of three. And this is our answer to this challenge. And a lot of students confused because, for example, in the beginning, what do we have? We have this challenge, x cube equal to x minus one cube. And a lot of students say, okay, this is the easiest challenge I've ever seen. And a lot of students uh, say this is a very easy challenge because we can cancel these three on both sides. But as a result, Right here, we can solve this challenge, as I told before, we have 0 equal to minus 1, which is a really bad approach, and this is our correct approach. And it's it, uh, this type of question is really tricky, because in the same way, a lot of students, for example, have this challenge on their exam, so x to the fourth equal to x minus 1 to the fourth power, so they, they have something like that. And uh, they um, cancel this 4 on the left side and on the right side. So something like that right here, and they have uh, something like that, x equal to x minus 1, or, or something like that. But this is a really bad thing. This is a really bad thing. I have a video about this challenge on my YouTube channel. You can easily watch this video. This is a very tricky challenge because a lot of students cancel both powers on both sides, which is which is really wrong in terms of math. We need to bring this to from right to left. And of course, I have, I have a video on my channel. Right now, this is our answer to our challenge. Of course, right now, I'm going to show a plot to this challenge so we can see a graph which, which uh, this graph does not intersect with each other. So it implies that right here we don't have like real number roots. So I hope you understand this part with the plot right here. We have this explanation. Right now, let's go back to this challenge. This is very important challenge in terms of math because a lot of students confused, a lot of students arguing with each other, a lot of students arguing about this uh, this solution. One part of students tell that we should do this, we should solve this like that. Another part of students uh, is is great that we have this part of students which uh, is, which solve this challenge according to according to this approach. So you can also see this approach right here. So we just raise our our left side to the, to the third power and we find our roots. This is a very tricky challenge. I hope your answer is the same as mine, but definitely don't feel bad if you got this wrong. It happens sometimes that you need to learn something new, that you need to remember something new. It's also a really great thing in terms of math, because, for example, just agree with me, if you solve this question like that, for example, we have this uh, question on your exam, let's write it. For example, you're sitting, you're sitting on your exam, yeah, something like that, let's do this right now. So, for example, you're sitting on your exam and you have this challenge x cubed, equal to x minus 1, x minus 1, cube, yeah? And you, for example, see that this is 3, we can cancel with this 3, and as a result we have x equal to x minus 1, something like that, and right here we have 0 equal to minus 1, and you go to the next question. You leave this challenge like that. Just agree with me, this is a very bad thing in terms of math, this is really, really bad to, um, to see that you solve this challenge like that for teacher, this is uh, very important when you solve this challenge correctly, but when you solve this challenge like that, this is really bad thing in terms of math. So forget about this fast 
method by inspection forget about this method trust you try to use methods according to a correct properties correct rule which is really important thing in terms of math so this is my explanation to this challenge thank you for your time thank you for your support also write your thoughts down into the comment section write your solution down into the comment section it will be really interesting to read about it and thank you for your time see you in the next videos also thank you everyone for your support i really appreciate it it inspires me a lot to make new content every day so thank you for your time have a great day and see you in the next videos